Okay, let's talk about inner product in the tensor notation. So I've erased everything except for this part because we still haven't explained away the conundrum of why this matrix is not symmetric, even though the transformation is called symmetric. But that, of course, has to do with both linear transformations and inner products. So we'll come back to this in just a few minutes, but for now, let's figure out the inner products. So what you're about to see is a calculation you saw three or four times in this class. The only, the only thing that's different now is the context. Now the context is linear algebra. And of course, the matrix that represents the, the linear transformation, excuse me, the matrix that represents the inner product is of course the metric tensor. That's all it is. So, but here's how you see it. So suppose we want to find u dotted with v. And this is not limited to geometric vectors. Maybe it would have been better to use the linear algebra notation where you put a comma here and surround it by parentheses. But we'll just use the dot because our example is geometric. The dot product is very appropriate for the dot product notation, this notation. It's very appropriate for geometric vectors, so we'll stick with it. But of course, this is much more uh, general. And our goal is, given the components ui and bi, how do you determine u dot v by manipulating components? And of course, it's very easy, because ui, u can be written as ui bi, and we're dotting it with vi, e, excuse me, vj bj which of course equals continuing with this chain. So ui dotted with, excuse me, ei dotted with ej is of course zij, uivj, something that we've seen so many times, but now we just understand, we understood it before, you're just seeing the same thing in the linear algebra context, but this is, basically the matrix of pairwise dot products of the basis vectors equals EI dotted with E sub J. And of course it's also called the Gram matrix and it's called the metric tensor and it's called the matrix representing the inner products. And we can even use the index juggling notation and make it use. I'm very sorry, my camera rang and the video interrupted and I didn't even realize and the next class is coming in soon. So rather than starting all over again, I'll just repeat what I said with the stuff already written on the board. So what I was about to say is that we can now introduce index juggling and indices can be lowered and raised. It's a wonderful thing to introduce to linear algebra. Why not? It leads to much more compact and much more powerful notation. And then if I were to rewrite this, in matrix form, let me just make sure that I've calculated uh, the gram matrix for this particular basis. So denoting it by Cij, what this number is, is E1 dotted with E1. This is E1 dotted with E2, 1 times square root of 2 <coughs> times cosine of 45 degrees, that's 1. This of course is also 1, and this is E2 dotted with E2. And if we recall our new basis, which looked like this, of course, the Gram-Schmidt, Gram, excuse me, matrix, the metric tensor, of course, that's all it is, is 2, 0, 0, 2, that's this guy dotted with itself. Okay, and if we were to rewrite this in matrix form, it would need to be arranged like this, and of course, when you convert things to matrix form, their order is important, and also transposes are important. So those are the two features, those are two features of matrix notation that you have to keep in mind. And then of course, the big question is, <coughs> how is this matrix related to this matrix, just like we did before? And do you see how it arose so very naturally with two lower indices? And the only way an expression such as this can work, these being two upper indices, is that this matrix has two indices, two lower indices. So the whole thing just screams doubly covariant tensor. And because it's doubly covariant tensor, we know that the new one is related to the old one by this Jacobian relationship. And the last thing I did before we got interrupted is 
rewrite them in such a way that it's natural to now write it in terms of matrices. The only caveat is that we still have first index here being contracted to first index here. So instead of this matrix, we'll have to take its transpose. <coughs> so what I'm about to do is erase the board and write out this relationship as matrices just for completeness. So you see how easy it is to remember uh, which matrices to use, that it's the tensor notation that uh, dictates what those matrices are, and that's about it. All right, and then we'll finally explain why this is not symmetric. All right, and here it is. This identity in matrix form, the new Gram matrix is related to the old Gram matrix by this matrix on the right and its transpose on the left, because you see here it's proper contraction, second index with the first, so that's straightforward matrix multiplication, but here it's the first index of this. So to make it into proper matrix multiplication, you have to transpose it. So this is the matrix, we called it X transpose before, but that's the matrix representing this Jacobian, and here's its transpose. So very similar situation to the matrix representing the linear transformation. Very hard to remember if you're just thinking in terms of matrices, but the tensor notation and the placement of the indices tells you exactly what to do. Okay, now finally, we'll explain why this matrix is not symmetric.